The Lord be with you. Welcome to worship this morning. I'm Pastor Will Moser, Pastor Emeritus of First Lutheran Church in Montclair. I was here a few times uh, pre-pandemic, uh, years ago, as it's now turning out, and happy to be back this morning to lead worship and to share the Eucharist with you. I have been fully vaccinated over two months ago, um, uh, the, so I will be leaving my mask off, uh, but trying to social distance as much as possible. Today is the uh, seventh Sunday of Easter, the last Sunday, our seven weeks is coming to a close, and today we hear Jesus uh, talking about um, uh, the unity of the disciples, uh, foreshadowing the Spirit being poured out upon them next week on uh, Pentecost Sunday. I believe that uh, you, you folks have uh, been receiving the communion here, taking it back to your seat, and then we will all uh, commune with the bread first, and then we will take a few moments to uh, open the communion kit, and then we'll take the wine uh, as well at my direction. Please stand as you're able for the thanksgiving for baptism. Alleluia, Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed, alleluia. Refreshed by the resurrection life we share in Christ, let us give thanks for the gift of baptism. We thank you, risen Christ, for these waters where you make us new, leading us from death to life, from tears to joy. We bless you, risen Christ, that your spirit comes to us in the grace-filled waters of rebirth, like rains to our thirsting earth, like streams that revive our souls, like cups of cool water shared with strangers. Breathe your peace on your church when we hide in fear. Clothe us with your mercy and forgiveness. Send us companions on our journey as we share your life. Make us one, risen Christ. Cleanse our hearts. Shower us with life. To you be given all praise with the Holy Spirit in the glory of God, now and forever. Amen.
The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. Gracious and glorious God, you have chosen us as your own, and by the powerful name of Christ, you protect us from evil. By your spirit, transform us and your beloved world, that we may find our joy in your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The first reading is from the book of Acts, the first chapter. In those days, Peter stood up among the believers. Together, the crowd numbered about 120 persons and said, Friends, the scripture had to be fulfilled, which the Holy Spirit through David foretold concerning Judas, who became a guide for those who arrested Jesus. For he was numbered among us and was allotted his share in this ministry. So one of the men who have accompanied us during all the time that the Lord Jesus went in and out among us, beginning from the baptism of John until the day when he was taken up from us, one of these must become a witness with us to his resurrection. So they proposed two, Joseph called Barsabbas, who was also known as Justice, and Matthias. Then they prayed and said, Lord, you know everyone's heart. Show us which one of these two you have chosen to take the place in this ministry and apostleship from which Judas turned aside to go to his own place and they cast lots for them. And the lot fell on Matthias, and he was added to the 11 apostles. The word of the Lord. <clears throat> Psalm 1 shall be read responsively. Happy are they who have not walked in the counsel of the wicked, nor lingered in the way of sinners, nor sat in the seats of the scornful. They are like trees planted by streams of water, bearing fruit in, the, in due season, with leaves that do not wither. Everything they do shall prosper. Therefore, the wicked shall not stand upright when judgment comes, nor the sinner in the counsel of the righteous.
The second reading comes from the book of 1 John, the fifth chapter. If we receive human testimony, the testimony of God is greater. For this is the testimony of God that he has testified to his son. Those who believe in the son of God have the testimony in their hearts. Those who do not believe in God have made him a liar by not believing in the testimony that God has given concerning his son. And this is the testimony. God gave us eternal life, and this life is in his son. Whoever has the son has life. Whoever does not have the son of God does not have life. I write these things to you who believe in the name of the son of God, so that you may know that you have eternal life. The word of the Lord. Jesus prayed, I have made your name known to those whom you gave me from the world. They were yours, and you gave them to me, and they have kept your word. Now they know that everything you have given me is from you. For the words that you gave to me, I have given to them, and they have received them, and know in truth that I came from you. And they have believed that you sent me. I am asking on their behalf. I am not asking on behalf of the world, but on behalf of those whom you gave me, because they are yours. All mine are yours, and yours are mine, and I have been glorified in them. And now I am no longer in the world, but they are in the world, and I am coming to you. Holy Father, protect them in your name that you have given me, so that they may be one as we are one. While I was with them, I protected them in your name that you have given me. I guarded them, and not one of them was lost, except the one destined to be lost, so that the scripture might be fulfilled. But now I am coming to you, and I speak these things in the world, so that they may have my joy made complete in themselves. I have given them your word, and the world has hated them, because they do not belong to the world, just as I do not belong to the world. I am not asking you to take them out of the world, but I ask you to protect them from the evil one. They do not belong to the world, just as I do not belong to the world. Sanctify them in the truth. Your word is truth. Have you have sent me into the world, so I have sent them into the world. And for their sakes I sanctify myself, so that they may also be sanctified in truth. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. I have one. I have two youth, one whom I can't see. Okay, now I can. Good morning, nice to see you guys today. Today we heard that the disciples decided that they needed to get a new member. Remember after Jesus was resurrected, Judas died. So there were only 11 disciples. And so they decided that they wanted to get one more to, so they would be 12 again. So they picked two people, Joseph and Matthias, but they didn't know how to pick, how to choose. So the Bible says they cast lots, they cast lots. Well, we don't cast lots today, but we do a couple things if we don't know who to pick. And one thing we do sometimes is we put two names in a hat and we shake them up and then we ask somebody to come 
and they pick out one of the names. Another thing we do is we draw straws. So I'll have straws in my hand that you can't see how long they are. And there will be straws sticking up at the top, and they'll all be the same length up there. But one of them is shorter than the other. And so we'll ask you to draw straws, and the one who draws the short straw wins. But there's another important thing that happens in the church before we draw straws or cast lots or pull a name out of a hat. We pray, and that's what the disciples did today. They prayed to God and said, God, show us who the right person should be. They prayed, said, should it be Joseph or should it be Matthias? So they felt that the Holy Spirit was leading them to pick the right name. When I was pastor at St. Matthew's in Secaucus, we had a big decision to make. We had to replace our nursery school director. And there were two candidates. One was highly qualified, and one was from the neighborhood. And we only had four people, and so we tied. So we decided to come back uh, a few days later and, and have a vote and see if anyone had changed their mind. Well, I had decided we would put two names in the hat and pray and see which one God would lead us to do. So we got to that meeting and we took a vote again and it was two to two. No, I'm sorry, we were going to take a vote. And I said, if we end up two to two again, I have a hat at the two names in, and we'll pray that the Holy Spirit will lead us to the right person. Well, one of the four was a politician, and he had talked to one of the other people and convinced her to change her vote. So it was three to one. And guess who won? The local person. We do well, however, to pray and believe that the Spirit is acting on our behalf, on behalf of the church, on behalf of the good, when we cast lots or draw straws or pick a name from a hat. And you can be sure, and in this pastoral vacancy, the Holy Spirit is leading and guiding you and a candidate to come and join you and continue this fine ministry for many years to come. Amen. Alleluia, Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed, alleluia. This seventh and final Sunday in the Easter season is at best a transitional feast. Last Thursday, the church observed the ascension of Jesus when he ends his earthly presence with humanity and ascends back to the Father to sit at the right hand of God the Father and to reign over the world. Jesus leaves this world so that he can be ubiquitous, everywhere, at all times, and in all places. Jesus is present here in Messiah, Oakland, and down the street at the Presbyterian Church, and down the block at the Episcopal Church, and a few blocks away at the Roman Catholic Church. Jesus is in every hospital room where he's prayed to, and in every child's bedroom, calming them against the night terrors. When the last trumpet sounds, Jesus will come and raise all believers from their graves and usher us into an everlasting relationship with the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and 
into eternal bliss. This is the presence of the ascended Christ, mediated through the per third person of the Holy Trinity, the Holy Spirit. This Sunday's readings also give us a portrait of the genesis of the church prior to its explosion onto the world's stage on Pentecost next Sunday. Our Acts reading reveals a startling statistic. The believers numbered about 120 persons. That would be a tenfold increase considering that there were 12 disciples. But it's still only 120 persons. About the average attendance of one of our Lutheran churches in Minnesota this morning. The frightened, huddled in the upper room band of disciples might have simply dissipated away, leaving the witness to the risen Christ to the dustbins of history. But today, we learn that they feel called to replace Judas in order, as the text says, that one of these might become a witness to us with his, Jesus, resurrection. In a Greco-Roman world, an eyewitness who knew Jesus and knew of his life, death, resurrection, and ascension would be important as these uneducated but inspired followers spread the good news and founded the Christian church as we know it today. Also, the method of casting lots to divine the will of God foreshadows the workings of the Holy Spirit. After prayer and deliberation, the group puts the decisions into the hands of God and assuming the presence and power of the Holy Spirit, allow the Spirit to act through the drawing of straws or the casting of lots. In the Gospel passage from St. John, we hear words such as protect them, and I guarded them, and protect them from the evil one. Many, us, many of us wish for such protection and guarding in many instances throughout our lives. Luther seems especially fond of calling God as our shield and fortress. In his morning and evening prayers, he invokes such oversight in his usual tender and loving language. Listen to his morning prayer. I give thanks to you, Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have protected me through the night from all harm and danger. I ask that you would also protect me this day from all sin and evil, so that my life and actions may please you. Into your hands I commend myself, my body, my soul, and all that is mine. Let your holy angel be with me, so that the wicked foe may have no power over me. Amen. His evening prayer is similar. similar. I thank you that you have graciously protected me today. I ask you to forgive me all my sins, where I have done wrong, and graciously to protect me tonight. Guarding and protecting. Good to hear on this final Sunday of our Easter celebration. May God graciously guard and protect all followers of the Good Shepherd and all who witness to the resurrection of the Son. Alleluia, Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. Amen.
Please stand as we profess our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. For your prayers this week, um, our member Marge Romanello is in the hospital. Um, she fell, broke her femur, and has had a mild stroke. So please keep her in your prayers this week. Is there anyone else? Okay. Alive in the risen Christ by the power of the Holy Spirit, we bring our prayers before God who promises to hear us and answer in steadfast love. Holy God, in Christ Jesus, the joy of the church is made complete. Root the church in your word and unify us as Christ's body. Send us into the world as your loving people, ready to testify to your spirit at work. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Mighty God, the world is your handiwork, displaying your creative impulse. Seas teem with life, forests reach up to praise you, and the mystery of life lies deep in the soil. Guard and keep this world for the well-being of all your creatures. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Gracious sovereign, those who follow your ways are like trees planted near streams of water. Establish the leaders of nations and all in authority in your grace and truth. Strengthen them so that the people they serve will have abundant life. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Generous Savior, you befriend those who are sick, suffering, poor, lonely, outcast, rejected, or sick. Grant healing and love to all in need. Especially today, we pray for Marge's recovery, and we pray for Alex's tests. Give them tangible signs of your steadfast love. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Creator God, here in this community, we share the gift of praying, learning, and supporting one another. Give us thankful hearts as we claim the gifts that are unique to us, and keep us from being envious of others with different gifts. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Saving God, your wonderful promise is the gift of eternal life in Jesus. Through the witness of those who have died in you, strengthen us now in this gift of life. We cherish the memory of your saints. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The peace of the risen Christ be with you always. And also with Let us share with each other a sign of God's peace.
The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our joy and delight, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so with the angels and choirs of heaven, all the angels on earth and hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, almighty, and merciful God. You are most holy, and great is the majesty of your glory. You so loved the world that you gave your only Son, so that everyone who believes in him may not perish, but have eternal life. We give you thanks for his coming into the world to fulfill for us your holy will and to accomplish all things for our salvation. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat, this is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Remembering, therefore, his salutary command, his life-giving passion and death, his glorious resurrection and ascension, and the promise of his coming again, we give thanks to you, O Lord God Almighty, not as we ought, but as we are able. We ask you mercifully to accept our praise and thanksgiving, and with your word and Holy Spirit to bless us, your servants, and these your own gifts of bread and wine so that we and all who share in the body and blood of Christ may be filled with heavenly blessing and grace and receive the forgiveness of sins and may be formed to live as your holy people and be given our inheritance with all your saints. To you, O God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, be all honor and glory in your holy church now and forever. Amen. Let us pray with confidence to the Father in the words our Savior has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The gifts of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God.
What a price shed for you. Amen. Joy, through this meal you have put gladness in our hearts. Satisfy the hunger still around us and send us as joyful witnesses that your love may bring joy to the hearts of all people through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.
Go in peace, serve the Lord, alleluia.